All right, you guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the QMJ channel. This time we're talking about a great cause that's happening this Saturday at Fir Park, eh, Motherwell versus Aberdeen on Saturday. And in the 90 minutes before the game behind the Davy Cooper stand, there's going to be the annual Christmas toy drive arranged by the Motherwell Community Trust and the Motherwell Podcast. We've got Andy for the Motherwell Podcast on today to tell us a wee bit about it. How are you doing, Andy? Yeah, very well, mate. Thanks for having us on. No, perfect. I think it's a brilliant cause and I think it's something that we definitely need to be promoting. So obviously... You guys have been doing this for a wee while. How did this end up starting and uh, how many years has it been running for and how successful has it been in the past? Uh, the, the initial idea just came from the podcast guys a couple of years back. We started, it was three years now, uh, come Saturday that we did it. At the time, uh, that was for a home fixture against Kilmarnock. Then last year we did it for a home fixture against Celtic and then obviously this year it will be when Aberdeen visit. It's expanded in the sense that we were quite overwhelmed in the first two years, to be perfectly honest, and the generosity of both sets of supporters in both occasions has been nothing short of remarkable. So this year, we've got the Community Trust on board to support us. We've got North Lanarkshire Council on board as well, and they'll assist with the distribution of the toys. So it's expanded, but it's in a much more coordinated fashion, which is, uh, is certainly a bit less of a headache for me in the days leading up, that's for sure. That's good stuff. So obviously, uh, if I've seen the paraphernalia right, you start, uh, you're start. you doing the collection sort of half one to three o'clock outside the Davy Cooper stand. Uh, obviously, if uh, for Aberdeen fans seeing this, the Davy Cooper stands, the stand behind the goals opposite where we get. Now, uh, what I'm really looking to see as well is I think a lot of people will wonder what your what what people are looking for and what they can donate and what would make sense. So obviously for people coming down the road on Saturday and want to get involved in this, what ideally is the type of thing you guys are looking for? The specifications for the toy driver are fairly lax, to be honest. Uh, we can't take anything with batteries due to safety reasons. Um, the teenagers... We're, we're very short of gifts in that regard. Uh, obviously, things like cuddly toys and things like that, well, we absolutely appreciate everything that we get. There is a bit of a shortage for 14 to 16, 14 to 17 year olds. So, things like perfume sets and, and makeup kits and deodorant sets, as much as we sometimes personally turn our nose up at these kind of things come Christmas time, all massively appreciated. That being said, to be honest, I'm just delighted to see people turn up with any sort of gift. We do massively appreciate it. Excellent. So, um, obviously, you've been doing this for a few years now. It's been organised, I believe, through, like you say, the Motherwell Podcast and the Motherwell Community Trust. Is it specifically in Motherwell or is it sort of like the surrounding areas of Lanarkshire that benefit from this as well? Across North Lanarkshire, there'll be nine toy distributions set up over the next coming weeks. Uh, the North Lancashire Council have already started their gift appeal um, and that's where we'll be supporting this year. The wider reach is, is, is quite incredible. Last year I, I personally was at the Bells Hill evening where they were, they were distributing the toys and it's quite a difficult one because you can see the queues out the door and, and people are so, so grateful to be taking other people's second-hand toys and it's, it's a very gratifying process I must say it's, it's nice to know that the support of football fans we quite often get a bad rap quite unfairly they're doing a, a great thing to support people who for Christmas is a real struggle the, the stories about people sacrificing meals to buy gifts and everything else and with our support it doesn't need to be like that we can make it a wee bit better by just doing a small amount so Last year, North Lanarkshire's appeal reached 1,500 households across the North Lanarkshire area. So, a massive reach, and they're planning to make it even bigger this year. So, fingers crossed that's exactly how it will go. It's excellent. And obviously, like this is the type of thing as well that some other clubs have been doing as well. If a club like Aberdeen, for example, in the future wanted to do something like this at Pataudry around about Christmas, what would it really take to set something like that up? Or is it just that sort of attitude to just go and get it done and get it advertised? Well, that, that's very much how I've operated with our podcast right from the start, to be honest. We we host a lot of events, we do a lot of fundraisers, and, and really all it needs is someone with a bit of get up and go. I suppose I've got an element of drive to, to promote things. 
and we've built up contacts through the podcast and we've got a good relationship with the football club but that's not even required to be perfectly honest it just needs a space some generous football supporters and then a van to distribute the toys but yeah it's so straightforward and as I say I've been quite overwhelmed particularly with Aberdeen players who have been retweeting things about the toy drive and, and Twitter that's greatly appreciated they obviously don't have any obligation to do that but they've got right behind it so yeah big thank you to Aberdeen already and I'm sure there'll be more thank yous to be given out after Saturday that's brilliant so like we said uh, outside the David Cooper stand between half one and three o'clock obviously like you said the Motherwell FC podcast has been going a few years now and it's been involved in a lot of different initiatives and different events and stuff like that. What was it that got you started with the Motherwell podcast? Because I know the numbers are obviously pretty good and how did the idea come about to just start the podcast and get it as big as it has right now? It came back to Stuart McCall left in November 2014 and we've all got a group chat like most other groups of mates do to be honest and we were we were arguing the toss about whether it was the right or wrong decision for him to be sacked. And you looked at Steel Men Online, which is the, the major model forum, or Pie and Bovril, the model thread and that. And it was very one-sided. It wasn't very balanced. And we thought, why don't we commit something to work here and, and just see how it goes? And four years later, we're still going. And I'm enjoying it more than ever. I've actually enjoyed the four years I've been doing the podcast in a footballing sense a lot more. And I don't, I don't know whether that's just a feeling of more involvement, it just a, a wee bit more of a connection to the club, but certainly it's went from strength to strength, but we still very much enjoy it, and it's still the same three Egypts talking away, keeping us out of the pub on a Sunday. I have, li- I have listened to it a few times before, and it is a really good listen, whether you're a Mur- Motherwell fan or not. It, I guess we kind of should talk about a football game that's actually happening on Saturday as well. Now, obviously, Aberdeen have been on good form, winning four in a row, despite the fact we're not playing great, to be honest. Motherwell are coming off the back of uh, uh, the, the game at Ibrox, which I heard your rant about. Motherwell this season has been pretty dreadful, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the fans of the football on display has been poor, the results have been poor, we looked like we had turned the corner with the victories over St Mern and Dundee, but then to go to Ibrox, and I think we all appreciate, if, if we're not Celtic supporters, that you're liable to go to Ibrox now and again and get a tonking, uh, it can happen, uh, particularly in the circumstances we went down to 10 men, but there's a manner to lose games, and the manner we lost that game was absolutely appalling, pathetic actually. So, really, Saturday is a massive chance for these players to bounce back and to give some sort of response. Obviously, Aberdeen, an excellent forum. Cup final on the horizon as well. I would have thought that maybe if it hadn't been the international break, Aberdeen would maybe rest a few players. But I think with the break, it'll be a full strength to Aberdeen's side. And we're right up against it. Aberdeen's record at Fur Park is very strong as well in recent times. I don't... I, I'm not going to say I fear the worst, but I struggle to see how we get a result in Saturday. The performance at Ibrox has completely shattered my morale, to be fair. But I just don't... As Stephen Robinson acknowledged, there's a way to lose football matches, and that's absolutely right. You look at the last four Rangers goals, and they're waltzing through the middle defence. We're not even attempting to tackle them. Uh, that badly has to be addressed. And if we get a performance then maybe with a wee bit of luck we can grab a point or even L3 points, but it's going to take a massive change up from what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it should be a, it should be a really interesting game on Saturday. Like I said about Aberdeen, obviously we're on good form at the moment, but some of the performances have obviously been sketchy. We were very lucky to beat Kilmarnock. We beat Rangers without doing too much in the game, to be honest. So, um, And the Hibs game could have went either way um, watching that game. So... Um, I still don't think the performances on our end are great, but obviously we're hoping that a wee bit of confidence after winning four in a row will boost us for this Saturday and then obviously the cup final next week. But yeah, so um, we'll, we'll see how the game goes as well. I'll probably upload a video after the game to talk about it, whether I'm happy or sad. But yeah, um, 
I, I'm not going to wish you the best of luck for the game, obviously, Andy, but I want to wish you the best of luck for the toy drive on Saturday. I will see you there beside the Davy Cooper stand. And if there is any Aberdeen fans who are going to the game, who've seen this video and want to give something, you know where to be on Saturday. Even if you're somebody who isn't going, but knows somebody who is and you can pass something along, that would be fantastic. So uh, we'll try and give you a bit of an update over the next couple of weeks uh, on how it goes. But... Uh, uh, keep an eye on Twitter as well. Um, the the app on the Motherwell podcast is just MFC Podcast on Twitter. That's right. MFC Podcast eighty six. I think we've got a Middlesbrough one with MFC Podcast. So don't follow that one. You'll find it there, like you say. MFC Podcast eighty six. Uh, Andy, thank you very much for coming on. No pleasure, and honestly, we do massively appreciate the support that Aberdeen have given us and. Obviously yourself and me on tonight, that's great. Brilliant. So uh, I will I will talk to you again on Saturday and Sunday, actually, Andy. But uh, for the meantime, like I say, we'll keep you updated with how the toy drive went. And hopefully, maybe this is something we can do at Pitaudry in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again sometime. <laughs>